In this video, we're going to show you how to use perfectly circular arrows and lines. And there are many reasons why you'd want to use circular arrows and lines in a diagram. Uh, one being creating feedback loops, um, another being maybe creating a plasmid diagram, and another could be something like a cyclical motion. So I'm going to create a perfectly circular arrow by coming up here to the Insert Line tab. And you'll notice that we've got um, curved arrows, for example, this one, that does look like a part of a circle, but it actually does behave a little bit differently. You can create more of a, a wavy line, um, like so, or, you know, of course, bring it back to um, being a perfectly linear line by removing the nodes. Our circular arrows do behave a little bit differently. Um, they're in this category here, and you'll notice that it follows a perfectly 360 degree angle if you drag it out. So I'm going to drag out a circular arrow. And now I cannot necessarily create a wavy line from this, but I can create a perfectly 360 degree circle with my mouse. No matter how you know unsteady my hand is, it's going to follow this perfect circular route. Okay. And what I can also do is navigate to this white node along the path of this circular arrow. And what you noticed is that, that my mouse turned into a pair of scissors when I rolled over that white little dot. And what that's going to do is exactly that. It's going to snip it in place. So I'm going to click my mouse down. And what that did is um, it kind of created this grouped icon where two of these arrows now are still in line. They're still along the same exact path, but they're actually two separate arrows. And so what I could do is adjust the tip and the tail like so, and maybe create um, a perfect third. That's a possibility here. And now this might be useful again if you're creating some sort of cyclical pathway, like so. I'm going to double click to exit this grouped icon. There we go. Um, I can also obviously change the thickness of this arrow, like so. I can change the thickness or size of the arrow head. Um, and of course the color, because it still behaves like um, any other uh, line. And now just to add to this figure, I'm going to actually include maybe some numbers here, maybe a one, a two, like so, and a three. So there you go, creating sort of a perfect or cyc cyclical uh, motion if you want to show um, some sort of cyclical pattern or behavior. I'm going to finish off this diagram here for the feedback loop. Same deal, kind of align the tip of that arrow to be flush to the bottom. I'm going to snip it at the top and then maybe change the arrow head to be an inhibitor line because in this case it is talking about inhibition. Um, perhaps make the arrow heads a little bit larger like so and then change the thickness of the line. So a little bit more visible. And I could even change the color. There we go. All right. And then finally, of course, you can create beautiful plasmids with EnviroRender using our perfectly circular arrows and lines. Um, I've just searched plasmid here in our icon library. And I'm presented with several different uh, pre-made plasmid diagrams. So I'm just going to grab this one here. It looks like it is a grouped icon. And basically what I can do is maybe I'll ungroup it actually. So I'm going to right click and ungroup. There we go. And now I can kind of change the size of each of these segments. And you can see here that it follows that perfect 360 degree angle as needed. Um, and if I want to add another segment, all I have to do is click it and then it will snip right where I've clicked my mouse. There we go. All right. So that's three different ways that I would use circular arrows and lines in BioRender.